So Nick, you seem a little more American today. What happened to that accent of yours? Ah, funny you should ask. This week I became a US citizen and I wanted to share that story with you guys. Here I am. Um, and my route to being a citizen was a little easier than most people, uh, a little faster than most people. Uh, I was a bit lucky from that point of view. Um, the, this, there's three stages basically becoming a citizen here in the US. The first stage is uh, the visa or work visa to get yourself into the country and working. The second stage is the green card or the permanent resident, um, which is what most people end up as. And then the third stage is becoming a citizen, which a lot of people don't bother doing. Uh, the first and second stages are the hard ones and the third stage is generally considered the easy one. For me, the first and second stage were easy and the last one was where I kind of got tripped up a little. Um, I started out uh, coming to the US because the company I worked for in Europe had asked me, hey Nick, do you want to come and work for us in the US? And I was sure, okay. And they arranged for me to get a visa to come and work in the US and it was an L1 blanket visa. Uh, and I just had to go to the US embassy in London and they put it on my passport and here's that uh, visa. Look at me, young Nick, so happy back then. Uh, and off I went to the US and I, I started out over in San Francisco and then I moved here to Connecticut. And uh, work, living in the US under a work visa um, can be a bit of a pain. Um, the reason for that is that generally you need to stick with the employer that gave you the visa and uh, there's restrictions on travel and depending on what type of visa it is, uh, there's other restrictions as well. So no one really ever wants to stay here under a visa because visas expire and there's all sorts of restrictions and uh, yeah, so as hard as it is to get a visa, uh, you want to move on from having a visa to having a green card or permanent resident as soon as you can. So when I arrived, my company uh, immediately applied for me to become uh, permanent resident or get a green card and the, the legal department said ah oh, for you in New Zealand it will probably take a year or two but for some reason then no one knows why my application just shot through in fact it only took a few days they put in the paperwork for me to, be, to get a green card and then a few days later I got a letter saying come in and do your fingerprints and photographs and you, you were all approved so uh, getting my, my visa and getting my green card was very fast and I uh, had no problem with those things. So most people stick with just getting a green card. You know, this, having, being a permanent resident or green card holder is more or less the same as being a US citizen. Um, the difference is being uh, in that you can't vote if you're just a resident. Um, you can't hold some public offices. You uh, need to renew the green card every 10 years. Uh, and a few other bits and pieces, some resources are not available to you. So most people just stick with the green card and just renew it every year, every, every 10 years. For me, I wanted to become a citizen uh, for a couple of reasons, mostly because I want the freedom to be able to live in the US or go back to New Zealand or go back to Europe uh, as I see fit uh, and not have my green card rescinded. If you live outside the US for long periods of time, they will rescind your green card and you have to go through the whole process again. Uh, and so by being a US citizen, I can come and go as I, as I see fit. Uh, and the other big benefit is that I am both a dual citizen, I am both a citizen of New Zealand and the US now. So I'm a dual citizenship. So I have the benefits of, of uh, being a citizen of both countries, which is great. Uh, the other thing I wanted, of course, was to be able to vote. I wanted to be able to vote in this year's election. So now I can do that. So yeah, um, the, the only time that I had any problems was actually going from uh, my green card to uh, to citizenship, which most people find very easy. You just have to wait five years and then you, um, and then you fill out this piece of paper and for a single guy that's never had a felony and never lived in these strange countries, never belonged to ISIS or anything like that, should be very simple for me. So I filled it out and they sent me in for a security interview uh, and that all went very well. Uh, and then you go for your uh, citizenship test. And they give you this book um, and it's got a hundred questions and a few other bits and pieces. And I'm a bit of a history buff, so I knew all the answers already. So it should be super easy for me to get through this. So I go in for the, for the citizenship test <laughs> and, the, and it's up in Hartford in, here in Connecticut. It's the capital of Connecticut. And they've got this guy who's going to be doing my test. And just my luck, he happens to be... a a deaf, a deaf mute guy, which is fine. They're like doing this equal opportunity stuff, uh, government department thing. And so he, because he's a deaf mute, there's a translator, American Sign Language translator with him and a second translator because they're training a translator as well. Um, 
And I, I thought, oh, no problem, that's all fine. But <laughs> even though I knew all the answers, this whole everybody speaking in sign language thing completely threw me. You know, we sit down in this guy's office, and, um, and, the, and, the, and what I had to do was I had to look at the, the interviewer, he would ask me the question in sign language, and then I had to turn <laughs> to the translator, who would then ask me the question in English. And then I turn back, <laughs> then I turn back to, the, to the interviewer, give him the answer, and then turn back to the sign language guy, who would then sign language the, my answer to the, to the interviewer if he didn't pick it up from lip reading. And the whole time, we were getting interrupted by the, the second sign language person who kept asking questions and keep trying to do the sign language as, as well. So uh, what were the three questions he asked me? He asked me, um, what is the economic system of the US? Which my answer was um, a market economy. And that's correct. Uh, the next one was, who was the president during the Great Depression and World War II? And my answer was FDR. But, and I know these answers, but when... When, when they're doing this, you know, him talking in sign language and this guy talking in sign language and this other woman talking in sign I was, when they asked me the question, my mind just went completely blank. Um, what the hell is going on? Why is everybody moving their arms around? So I nearly screwed the whole thing up because even though I knew the answers, every time they asked me a question, I, I, my mind just went blank. I was just completely thrown by the whole sign language thing. Anyway, I ended up answering all the questions correctly and, and it was fine. But man, it was a bizarre interview, that's for sure. So yeah, I, do, I went through that and that was all good. Uh, and the next stage is once you've, oh, was it before that or after that? Or one of the stages is you've got to go in for your fingerprints and your, and your photograph. And, um, and I'm in there and it's like any government department, everyone's glum and it takes forever and you sit in a line for three hours and you finally get there and they, and, it, and it's the photograph for this, it's the photograph for the, uh, for, for the, the they put on your actual certificate. And I'm in there smiling away, and the lady is, you can't smile, sir. And I'm, I'm not smiling, but I must have been kind of, you know, I have trouble not smiling. And so I'm, I'm, not, I'm not smiling. <laughs> and she goes, you're smiling, sir. If you keep smiling, you're going to go to the back of the line. And I'm, oh, my God. <laughs> and another three hours wait. And so I'm trying to look as serious as I can, and I end up getting this photo, which makes me look like some sort of murderous raper. <laughs> but we got there in the end. So those are my hiccups with getting my citizenship once that was all done, clear sailing. And so this week I went into the courthouse um, to, 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 to do the swearing in ceremony, which is really cool. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm lucky that I'm in Connecticut and it's a beautiful courthouse. The, the judge said um, that it's the oldest courthouse in the country and, and it, the details in this courthouse were beautiful. And there were 31 of us getting sworn in on Friday. Uh, and, and here, here's a picture of me uh, in the courthouse waiting to be sworn in. And the judge was fantastic. She says, this is my f the favorite part of my job. You know, she says, I love doing these, uh, these swearing-ins. It's so much fun. And, uh, and then she's looking through the list and she goes, oh, there's someone from New Zealand. I've never had to swear in someone from New Zealand. Who's, who's this Nicholas Murray? Stand up, please. And so I stand up. And she goes, you know, this is the example of, you know, how everyone from every country and blah, 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 and we've got so much in common with New Zealand and, you know, we're competing with you in the Olympics. And, you know, she did this big speech on New Zealand, basically, and then she made me sit back down. Um, but, yeah, she did, it. she did a really lovely speech. And, um, well, I was allowed to take some photos. I don't think I was allowed to take video, but I did sneak in some video, and, and uh, I'll put that in here. I think maybe we don't think very hard about what it means to be given the gift of being an American. And I don't think we often consider whether we would choose it, whether we would make the sacrifices that are required that you all have made to do this um, if we were asked. Um, and uh, we sometimes take it for granted. Um, and you all, by going through the process you've gone through, by leaving behind places you love, some of you much nicer climates, uh, people you care about, you really honor us by choosing to become part of America, and I thank you for that. So basically, a big part of her speech was that, you know, um, it's not that, that we're becoming uh, Americans, it's Americans uh, taking us in, and we are adding our cultural um, uh, diversity to the US and that's what's great about the US is that it's people from all nations and and all backgrounds and all all sorts of traditions and foods and stuff like that and so what she was saying was instead of just trying to become 
a US citizen, you know, you need to share your culture and your foods and your um, ways with, with your neighbors. And, 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 and that's what makes the US great is everybody's sharing everything and it just a big cultural diversity that makes it a lot of fun. Um, and so yeah, his speech was fantastic. I wish I was allowed to video it properly because it was a really lovely moving speech. I really enjoyed it and she did such a great job. But yeah, basically we went up one by one and we've got our certificates and we've got a photo taken. Here's my photo. And, um, and that was it, you know, and now I'm a, both a US citizen and a New Zealand citizen and, and it's fantastic, you know, I, uh, I'm very proud and, you know, there's a lot of, a lot of changes going on in the US that, um, that, that some people are afraid of, but personally I think, you know, uh, the world is getting is, is a better and better place every year and I think the US is, is moving along as well and, uh, well, there's a lot of people that are a bit gloom and doom. I, I, I enjoy living here and I think things are getting better and better as the years go by. So yeah, that's my story on becoming a US, and US citizen. Um, I'm also still, as I said before, a New Zealand citizen, so I get the benefits of both. But yeah, I'm, uh, I'm very proud and very happy to be a US citizen. Mm -hmm.